This is another live radio link up brought to you by the government communications GCIS. 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 It's a very good evening to you and welcome to it, our special broadcast. And it's brought to you courtesy of Government Communication and Information System, the GCIS, together with the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development. And uh, the guys are back again, as you can remember, a couple of months back, uh, they were here and we were doing the Let's Talk Justice Live Your Rights show. And uh, the team has decided to come back because uh, there's something very, very important they would like to speak to you about and that's what we're going to be exploring for the next coming uh, 55 minutes so stay in there with us because it's going to be quite a, um, a ride this one it's one of those uh, programs that i would like you to get involved in in fact uh, don't just sit there and listen but I would like you to be involved in it by way of calling in, and I'll give you the toll-free number as we go along. My name is Karabal Lance. I'm glad to be in your company. This thing is going to be happening all the way through to 10 past 7 o'clock, where we're going to be discussing issues of very, very, very important. So stay in there with us. government communication and information system. Justice and Institutional development. Lina la kake karabolans kitabu la obalu ena kito kopele mtiri chikolu eno kuti karolo mo kashonyera na ya bushikombi alhono squadu la fe la morago lu ena ngori leche kuna la sisi nse longo mkromo kanya kubula la kaso na kitabu la obalu ena oh eight hundred one four two double four six that's oh eight hundred one four two double four six it's a toll free number if you're going to be calling from a landline otherwise if you're using your cell phone call in and we'll give you a call back we'll take your details down and in that way saving you costs how about that let me not rattle on because i can do that quite well but um, i'm not the person that should be doing that uh, this evening um one that's going to be facilitating your calling in and our guest in the studio who's going to be telling us about this a very important subject we're talking about intimate femicide and my safety plan and coming up uh, we're going to be also talking about the establishment of what we call the femicide watch something that i would like you to to look forward to joining us in the studio it's going to be Advocate Press Kambula. She's heading the promotions of Rights of Vulnerable Groups Unit at the DOJ CD. Mayor Press, thank you so much for coming back. I'm pretty excited to see you back. You and I, the last time you were here, we had lots and lots of fun with our listeners. So thank you so much for joining us back again. Thank you. Thanks, Karabu, and thanks to your listeners. All right. And by way of telephone, somebody that's going to be joining us uh, coming up later is somebody that you are very used to seeing on television. And it's something that's, somebody that's doing an absolutely amazing work in terms of turning stuff around and turning the tides around when it comes to uh, abuse and all of that stuff. It's somebody that I've worked with as well. It's uh, Mr. Patrick Shai. Uh, Patrick is going to be on the line coming up soon. So we're looking forward to be chatting to him. So he's going to be joining us. So if you've just joined us, welcome to it. Let's 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 kick off really I'm, I'm i'm very excited about this uh, i never thought we'll we'll deal with this in fact i was thinking a couple of uh, weeks ago when when we were clouded with a black cloud of mm. uh, abuse of women and uh, some of our children were dying out mm. there in the hands of their loved ones and, and they i was thinking still are dying. and they still are even mm. right now and hence we've 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 come up with this um program intimate femicide and my safety play tell us about it what is it that we can look forward to be talking about in this show Okay. As a department, um, uh, last year we started uh, the anti-femicide movement. Um, we are doing it with um, the NGO that everybody knows, uh, the Tswaranang. And we have also now partnered with Kulumandoda that is uh, founded by Patrick Shai. And the purpose of this is to ensure that we destigmatize domestic violence because femicide is the, the end result of domestic violence. The reason that women are dying is because of the fact that they have probably, um, it, is, it is a domestic violence that has been there for a long time, unattended to 
or probably not intervened effectively. So you find them then from that cycle of violence now uh, dying. And we have realized as, a, as, as, a, as the department that we've been going out to, 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 to talk about domestic violence, but we have not used the word femicide, that if you don't do or take any action, you will ultimately die uh, from, from domestic violence. And we have also now, as you know that, we, we as a department are responsible for the development of legislation. Mm. And we have, we have noted that um, our pieces of legislation, the provisions that we have there, are about changing the, the behavior of people people but not the attitudes so now we have partnered with the men's organizations mm. and also with Kulumando and Patrick Shai being our our champion for the men's um, for the men's dialogue so that let's go out to people right now and talk and talk about domestic violence and femicide and and ensure that then now to we deal with the social ills social ills from the men's perspective that actually lead to women dying the issues of how men are supposed to be men in their households because we have checked that and we realize that if we don't go to the roots of the family fiber we know that now there's too much decay of the family fiber because of the fact that you find that that you have women there who are doing the solo parenting and without a father being there we are dealing with families where where children are socializing in a way that makes them to know and to to be groomed into knowing of the, that there's male dominance over women and girls and the way that the role classifications that you would find them where you will you learn that um, the boys are, are idling around and the girls are taught how to do this and that and even for the boys themselves so it's all those issues put together the way that we socialize our children the cultures that come into play the religion that comes into play that makes men to think that um, they are above women you know those are the issues of patriarchy that we know of that patriarchy is one of the issues then that is actually um, um, uh, contributing to 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 violence they are not the cause but they are contributing to violence right. the unemployment <clears throat> of men and and also with us in South Africa we have the employment equity act that um, is intended to put women you know at the equal space with men in terms of salary and now bridging that gap now means that it's more women who are employed right now so as to bridge the gap it's also women who are getting the you know jobs um, in management positions and making them now better earners than their husband or the partners and we did not educate men as to how they should be handling those kind of situations and then that then results in in women being exposed to violence. Wow. Mm -hmm. 800 142 I think my guest has uh, really opened it up uh, quite quite well and I would like to invite you already to start calling in if you've got any questions with regards to what we're talking about. Uh, some interesting uh, terms have been used uh, and we're going to go back to them now shortly. So 800 142 that's 800 142 It's a toll-free number if you're going to be chatting uh, from a landline. And coming up in the next, uh, say, maybe 10 minutes, we're going to be hooking up Le Brapet Shai, and I was going to be telling us uh, this issue from his side. So we're looking forward to that. I'm, I'm, I'm saying there's, there were a couple of terms I've heard, and uh, maybe some of the terms might be um, clear to some of us, but some people may not understand them. For instance, let's start with the one femicide. Somebody might be hearing this for the first time and asking yes, themselves, yeah. okay, what on earth are we talking about? Femicide is the dying of a woman or a girl at the hands of a man or a boy. It's when um, the issues of power and control come in and then they lead to a kind of violence that lead to the loss of life of a woman 
or a girl. And in South Africa, we don't only have, because we have the types, types of femicide, we have the intimate femicide. And the intimate femicide is where then the woman dies at the hands of the lover or a partner. And we also have the non-intimate uh, femicide where they don't have a domestic relationship or an intimate relationship between themselves. And then you also have the Rashua-related femicide. The Rashua-related femicide is, is what we have been seeing, you know, going on in South Africa, where you find that a person dies because of a particular Rashua that is needed. And now we are seeing a lot of girls disappearing because of the fact that they they want to take their private parts to make mutis that they think that they will be making them wealthy. So there is that phenomenon that is going on of parents losing their girls and others are snatched and stolen from school when they are, you know, when they are walking from school to, to home. So parents need to acknowledge that and to know that we have those people now who are hunting girls and we also have those, we, we also so I had an incident of, of uh, albino girls dying, and that is called the Rashua related femicide because they are being killed for a particular Rashua. We have also had um, of those who are dying because they are being initiated into Satanism, and then the initiation then will call for the dying of a woman so that we take a particular part. It could be the womb of the girl and be taken to cause a particular Rashua or maybe just to drink the blood of that girl. So it's all those things put together that are making now in South Africa that we are losing more of our women. We are losing more of our girls. And it, it is so unprecedented, so barbaric. It's something that we need then to keep it being a conversation in our homes and as parents to see ways in which we could be uh, protecting our girls and our boys and also schooling them in a particular religion. Because if you have not given your children and, and, and sort of uh, in, and introduce them to a particular religion, then they will learn of another religion from their, from their peers. So mm -hmm. now we need then, we have got to a point now of saying that this thing is a social ill. It involves parenting. If you do not know as a parent on what education that you should be giving your children, there are educators out there. Yeah. They are ready to educate your children into issues that will make your children, your child to be an animal inside your home. And that then moves to our communities. And that's basically what we are having. Jeez. 25 minutes after 6 o'clock. Welcome to it. If you've just joined us, we're talking about a hectic issue here. Um, in fact, it's one that's being way overdue as far as I'm concerned. I mean, uh, yeah. We've had agree. stories um, over the past couple of weeks. Um, I think the one that was dominating the news and social media was the death of Karabo Mukwena. But um, she's not the only person, really, that died at the hands of somebody who was um, um, yes, having course. a relationship with yes. him. There's quite a few, actually, after her, even mm -hmm. even before then. Yes. Um, so um, it's starting to come up, this I thing. I can and give we, you the statistics of that. Uh, let's talk about that, even maybe, now that you're saying that. I mean, uh, the, the studies that's been done, really, what is it? that we're finding what is what is the cause of all this let's start there with the studies that have been done in south africa we've got two that were done by the medical research um, council and uh, the first one was done in 1999 uh, where it was found that 8.8 .8 per hundred thousand women girls age 14 dying in south africa due to intimate femicide and it actually placed us high above every other country. And the next country that was following was um, was 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 was, um, uh, was America. In Amer America, it was Carolina. And and you're saying the age of 14. 14, 14 and above. And and the next study that was done, it was done 10 years later uh, by the same um, organization, and uh, that was done in 2009, and where then a decline was found. They found a decline, and it was a decline of 24%, of 24.1%. But it's a decline that we should not be excited about, where it, it, it was found that 5.6 per 100,000 girls and women 
age 14 and above have died due to intimate femicide. But we should not be excited about that decline because the, the researchers found that, that in South Africa, the way that we're keeping our data is not as good. And of course, there is not a single country in the world that will say that we are so powerful in our data collection. But in South Africa, there was a bit of a decline. They got these statistics from the mortuaries and also from the police dockets and, 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 and from the, the, the um, um, you know, the men medical, the medical um, uh, centers. But where I want to say is that 14% um, of the dockets that they, 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 they explored, they realized that the domestic relationship was not specified. So we have 14% 14, 14 of women who have died in 2009 that could not, those cases could not be included. That you then were saying that that fact factor alone, alone that could have contributed to this decline. And now we are seeing a lot of them dying. I mean, Karobo, women are dying. They are dying. And um, I just took um, the media, the media reports, uh, starting from January mm -hmm. up to May, mm -hmm. and uh, sorry, up to June, um, and when say June, up to the 6th of June. Right. And I captured 31 cases. 31 cases of women who have died and that number could be more because there are those that the media does not capture that go to our police and all that yeah. but in south africa now if you come to our courts it's something now that we are working on we we don't have a specific crime called femicide and we're working on that. Is that what we want to put? Is that what we want to legislate? If we have a, a, a specific crime called femicide, we'll be able then to capture all those cases. So we are working on that because all cases in South Africa are called murder, irrespective of the domestic how relationship be, and yeah, how. Yeah. So we really need now to improve. We have mm -hmm. established a task team that is looking into how we are able then to capture yeah. the details of the victim when, when the case are coming into our 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 system and the same applies with the police to ensure that even the police the face of the police docket also is able to capture the type of the relationship between the perpetrator and the deceased so that we're able then to capture that that's why now we are saying that we are establishing the femicide watch because the femicide watch it's about capturing all all the cases of women and girls mm -hmm. who have died because of, of 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 power and control because of the men and the boys and all that that have killed them so the purpose of the femicide watch mm -hmm. we wanted to have not only the um um you know the 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 um, the, the the space where we collect all these cases right. because we believe that if we have that we'll be able now to do a proper profiling of the victims mm -hmm. that have died and also of the perpetrators who are actually killing and even to know as to where these killings are happening mm -hmm. because if we know where they are we'll be able then to channel our resources where they are most needed and we also want to know as well as to what laws and policies that we need to develop that will be properly addressing right. the incident of femicide in our country go check out some of the work that apartment is doing it's very easy just go into their website it's justice.gov.za that's www.justice.gov.za let's go to the telephone lines 0800-142-446 Patco calling from uh, Eliwal North it's been a while we've spoken uh, since last we've spoken to Patco and I'm glad he's back Patco good evening to you uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. The Department of Justice keeps a role in the law. But never to the gun. Ask a endapa if a victim or no, who's a gun like a tomb or banning, will you attract me to a ban again that day? Capo boyfriend or a scalic ablela mutu, manka pamang, or a tilly mamma, 
utlobo na mama ha tswa ka mra for 5 days o bona ga motshena o ile a tlikifetswa o na le di browsers ka mona o bontsa lo gana o o tlo ke putsa ga billion and then putsa ga bedi o na le bomme o kgomalo o ka bale le ndadi wa lapa ha ka ta o ka bale le ndadi wa lapa ba ka bane a kenetse ndadi e protection order after 2 to 3 days down the line o bitsa ndadi ina hape e o re a khutlele ga tlo e ka bale no department in tshotse jwalo e ka di lukisa jwang ya o qetela ne ba tla o tseba e o nda te shaine e le department le e feite ga mono re e a ona program mo ba tla bitsa specific batho ba bonta de e le ba shanyana re ba ba route ma pili e le bo wrong ba re o tlhikifetsa motho a me ke ntwe wrong hape le o tlhikifetsa ka bo go bolaya batho ke ntwe wrong ba ni if you are shaiba in our days batho ba 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 tsha e o na le ntlo tswa ke peer pressure ne e ka bo batla e o bontsa le yena re ke boss e le nna no fitwa ke part ko ka ba ke le bong ga sit and then dinak tai prove a point re no le nna ke mchita ra machita e ka bona tsona program tsentse bontsa bo wrong o re no a o yentse so a o sona bona bo ka motho nge kwa pitwa fumana mtsiri tsinge kwa hirwa ke government ke a le bo a hulo ka ra bo ka ba mela o takala ne radio ke a le bo a part ko thank you so much for your call i mean he'll be foolish to think or ke mchita as far as i'm concerned which is somebody that's taking care of their wives and their family and the, you know the exactly. yeah then mm. then umji um, you know we we've mm. got a lot of respect for you mm. uh, but uh, if you're not doing that <laughs> maybe stay away from the word mjita because it's not suitable for you let's take uh, tepo is calling from tlegsdop tepo timen hello yes what in tepo ဟိုတယ်ဟိုတယ်ဟိုတယ်ဟိုတယ်ဟိုတယ်ဟိုတယ်ဟိုတယ်ဟိုတယ်ဟိုတယ်ဟိုတယ်ဟိုတယ်
how can we help as as the department how can we help as government to teach women that it's very important to number one speak up when these sort of things are happening to them and to go and report them to 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 the relevant authorities yes um that is true eh? That is why, as a department, we started the, the anti-femicide movement. It's got um, a number of streams, three streams. And the fact, the first one, it is the dialogues with women, uh, exclusively women. And the reason that we're doing that, we want to destigmatize domestic violence. Why is domestic violence stigmatized? Why, if I am beating up or I'm sexually abused by my partner, then I should be thinking that everybody's going to be laughing at me or everybody does not expect me to to be to be you know um, exposed to that we need then to destigmatize that women we are good in talking about the recipes of food that we are doing how we are raising our children and all we talk very nicely even about our relationships whereas then the relationships are sour so what we are doing right now is to say come out and talk about it there's nothing wrong you are the victim here so being the victim why are you scared of talking about it so the dialogues then are encouraging women and what we do is that we bring them the conquerors we're calling them the conquerors we have drawn conquerors from five areas one is a politician because we have learned that even the politicians are exposed to violence with uh, mm. in, in their household mm. and the other one is coming from the entertainment industry because with the entertainment industry sometimes is they are exposed to that because of the fact that they do not have um they they are forever in contracts some of them that make them then if you want to buy a car then you have to use your intimate partner to do that and then they are subjected to abuse mm. and then we also have um, the youth somebody who almost lost her life and was um a beating up by the boyfriend and dropped along along the road thinking that she was dead and then it so happened that she was dropped next to a place a hospital and was captured there by the security guards and taken to hospital where she stayed for three months recovering from those injuries and My she has goodness. written a book on that we have her in mm -hmm. the program we have also a pastor who was who started out as a prostitute and she started to be a prostitute in her teens and moved up and and then um and then go to a point now of of recovering from that and now she's a pastor and you know as we know the two of us that we have men who go to churches uh, pretending as if they are the goody goodies and holy holies but get to home they are abusing their partners and so we have put all those categories and these are the women in our dialogues that's come out and, and mm. talk about their experiences because we are saying that if we have people who are open about those experiences they are sort of encouraging women to come forward and report those cases okay it looks like we're battling to get a hold of uh, patrick uh, there i'm not sure what is going on but uh, uh we'll just keep on trying and see if we can we, we can yeah. get him um now he could be busy at the moment but we'll just keep on trying but let's go to the telephone lines quickly i think what you've just said now covered some of the comments that tepo has made but i'll just go back to one of, of the comments uh tepo made and um, this is something that i've been hearing from quite a lot of people mm. being anti the take a gold child to work um, campaign that, that happens annually but we'll go back to that and we'll deal with that shortly now but let's take tempo i beg your pardon let's go a step back let's take lungam uh, lungam is calling from cape town uh, good evening to you lunga molo tata please can you but I'm scared I'm going to swear on a I'm born again. Yeah, I don't know that I learn though. I learn. Lunga Dabula Tat. Yeah, and the Bulela Tataman and Goska Kulu Toho, and the Sunuku Tike, Naman Ditike, Moluening, Galensuku, Africa, Pagasia, Koto, all of us Karabo. I hear so. I hear it's been raining uh, this morning. And the Sunuku, yeah, yeah, the Netika Kulu, and quite a survival from West of Tom, and this which gets a fellow, Kora gets a survival, the West of Tom, the second. Great, sir. But Karabo, who undipelatoko Nogus Bulzela, Apoke, Toko Kuma, Mekaya, 
ee nko sika kulu nga lomki mbubale kika nga nga kumbi uza kuti singa matuata not only just a matuata kupela patuata yeah. kia singa ota ata bekaa yeah ee lomki mbuko kala ngefuna mnu kufa kubana hapa kumama kuti ayiko na ingela ngea wafa lama kama mna andi putkarabo when it comes to ee eh, nza watike msa mngu kwezi ngezi ya kondo o oh, anti femicide nja nilo nja alo lama kama lana mna andi kakulu ee eh, nga watike msa mngu mm. kwezi ngezi but ingaba ikho na ingela ee yukutata lama kama ango intimate femicide ee eh, mshawa mbike siwe nze waka nyezi campaigns waka nyezi mshawa mbike siwe department siwe nze nge 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 luimi ee za uti li tandu kusonde la ee kubandu baku utaba za uti ke mshawa mbike nza uti kuni nzi ilo communities hapo ee zi nga kizi tandu baku kubwa ke lama kama nge nyezi kasha tandu ba mshawa mbike kuma wano bungo zi kakulo za uti ke not chato bungo zi pati ke abanya bandu banzi ma mshawa mbike kutike ba tandu kwa yamana na ayo kwa nyike ba tandu kwa yiva lendo setangazo right ndi kuitekile ba kubwa kwa ndifuna nga ba mshawa mbike nga wana nge la ba noti ba tete nga nge nge mshawa mbike nga wana nge 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 ee uh, enye indo nifunguzo how is the boy child being ke mshambi incorporated ke yona nga waka mshambu mdano ongu ongu mduana o ingwe ngwa nyana pae kaya ndi ken bwone ke mshambu kuta tipo o girl child besuwa ezu kolui ya kon ee mm. for his indo zo baba zamu kubwone how is u boy child uh, ukubwone iswa nge nga ki nga kumbi mm. ee eh, ukutibanga abuse abandu abango mama na abandu anabanga manto mba zana abati batibane na bekspeshe lu mduana mshambu o ingwe ngwe nga waka mshambu incorporated njane kwa ezu project ka government za mawe especially ke mm. kwela kwa kakumbi kubandwa na abasez township karabo yeah. naba, naba kwe rural area kakumbi right. rural area then the last one if you look at eh, what is done especially about ke eh, nza ke mchambi the young boy ke leena ke ngu kunza ke yona iye yaba ke that not the perpetrator per se but the eh, victim especially those that are inside prisons remember kuko ababa yeba kwejo some of them bakwe kwejo five years two years whatever ke mchambi eight years baza upuma after eight years and then what then Sancho, how is there any project programs that can incorporate those people to understand the human side of umtu and understand good to get uh, it was mchambi ibi rongo la yeah. anga kuli la ngumbo ngu kumtu ba bendi kene suwa panga pagati nge ngaba bende nze kei ndo zinchengiz so ndi za mkutu ke isiba incorporate anja nebo na kui community zetu kwenza thank you so much yeah. thank you lunga calling from cape town let's go to madibuho and we uh, chat into tepo tepo de mel Sepo? Ya tala. Timen. Ya tala. Ore mbrog. Mbo. E tala. Potso ha wereng. E na tota ha se potso tota ke tshailo hela e tsena lone mo khaneng. Ante nte re utlo tshailo ha o tsepo. E tshailo ka ke gore tsana. Gore botse tsa gore tike ke re tshalo tsa di ga di re botse tsa sepele khanye thutu. Gore ha re ka hetola ka mo gore ha ka nyaka tere le batho i'm sorry about that it's because now this is coming it's coming for the third time waibuwa wena we just had lunga now speaking about it as well at the take a girl child to work it seems like um, people are not really comfortable about that tepo it sounds like you what could be the problem with the take a girl child to work campaign what, what, what could be the loopholes we're not saying that you're saying it's wrong necessarily but i'm i'm i'm, I'm sensing that it's like you guys are um, 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 you know are picking up loopholes when it comes to this buthata ka no ba ileng mo tepo ha se buthata ka yo yo ne ka bonotse ka ntse gore teka teka lo abuti right Okay. 
Right, okay. All right, thank you so much, Sepo uh, for calling in. I really appreciate it. Sepo calling from Madibuho. And um, this this thing is coming up for the third time, and hence I stopped Sepo wanting to get clarity on that. It seems like people are saying it's not wrong, the campaign as such, no. But they're saying, aren't we necessarily perpetuating the problem by not treating the boy child to a girl child equally? In fact, Sepo is saying, look, I think the best way to deal with the whole mess is to treat a girl child and a boy child equally. And he's not the only person that said that. Lunga hinted it mm-hmm. as well. And we've That's also right. had, uh, I think it was, um, I think it was Sepo came in. Another Sepo came in mm. with that as well. So, so what is your take on that? But let, let me just ask eh, um, the listeners and, and us here. What, what is wrong with, uh, with us now as parents? We are shifting the responsibility of parenting, either to the peers, uh, to the teachers, to government. But where are we as parents? Is it not our responsibility to teach and to build a mentality of love in our children and to create that responsibility in our children? Parents right now, in, in, if you look at the demographics of parenting in our country, and I think that that started in, 19, in 1976, we are seeing the age of a parent getting younger. And we are also seeing the age of parent getting f- very old. Uh, the reason for that is because we have families now, parents who are dying, um, unfortunately, because of HIV AIDS, leaving then their children to their grandparents. And the grandparents um, have done their job already. And you cannot raise a child of today using a grandmother. And you have now young Young parents, parenting in South Africa now is starting at the at the teen year, at the teenage years, and it's such a sad situation. So we need then to take a responsibility with this program. Now we are saying that where is the role of a father? Because the fathers now do not know the you know parenting, and um, I you can talk about it, taking the boy and the and the girl to 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 work, you know that program. But what are you doing as a parent here in the in home? What are you doing? What are you portraying to your children? What education are you giving to your children? We still have fathers who are sending their children to go and buy liquor, to go and buy cigarettes. What are you teaching your children as a parent so yeah. we we really now need to focus on the family fiber and look at what is it that is really causing a lot of decay in mm. our in our homes the program that we have the reason that we have partnered with men's organization as a department as i said in my introduction that our laws it cannot change the attitude so now we have to ensure that now we put our efforts on parenting because that boy who is now killing women, was once a baby, dependent on you as a father to show that boy the right principles of being a man. But then if you have never been taught that, you yourself, so how can you do that? So we have now men's organization like the Kuluman daughters and the dads in the picture that are actually now uh, that the department has partnered with to ensure that now we are are actually focusing on fatherhood, the male influence in your home as to what should be your role in parenting. Mm -hmm. If I can ask you, Karabo, do you know what is the role of a father in a home? You will tell me that it is to bring money. It does not end there. You should be a visible father. You should be the father who is educating your child about everything. Be responsible, check as to what was happening at school Mm -hmm. and be able to be there to do the homework and and be able to educate Mm -hmm. your child Mm -hmm. about many things Mm -hmm. even the things of love and respecting the girl that is at home which is the sibling and also the girls out there it is your responsibility we need to teach our children how to be responsible even in terms of finances because right now we have 
we have fathers who are so insecure and the reason that they're insecure it is because of the probably the the social economic factors that they have unemployment unable to make money the reason that they are unable to to generate funds is because of the fact that they were not told as to how to stand on your feet when they were young as to how to stand on your feet and make money so now we we have a responsibility as parents that the money that you give to your child you you say that I'm giving you 10 rands, but tomorrow I want to see it being 50 rands. Generate and increase that money. Start thinking responsible towards making money. And yeah. if you have a child that is like that <clears throat> and, and learning about entrepreneurship, you know, at that at that at that age, you are building a a society, a family that is grounded on how to make money. And that comes out and then and goes to our communities. Because the issue of finances Karabu, we have found it as one of the contributors to violence is because people now, they found themselves that I don't have any money in my pocket and now they misdirect the anger to women, to yeah. this poor woman. Yeah. So we yeah. really need now to be responsible as parents. We're going to explore that. We've got in quite a bit, but let me take um, other callers quickly. 0800-142-446, 0800 uh, Can I ask you to maybe just um, one question at a time? I think uh, people are posing like three questions and stuff. It's taking a bit of time really to, to get through to all the three questions uh, at a go. We'd like to give other people a chance to come through and we speak to them as well. So, Kwena from Mulechi, let me ask you to be brief and short. Good evening to you. Kwena? Hello, Karabo. Legame. Rona. Rona. Then after Bamisha Private Hospital, we don't have to go to medical Private Hospital. Jana Majafel. Okay, Quena will yo okay, Quena, thank you so much for your call. We'll get back to that question. Uh, uh, it's, yo, it's quite a deep one, this one. Let's go to Kulufelo Masha. Uh, Kulufelo is actually the spokesperson oh, really oh, of um, Not in My Name. It's an organization called the Not in My Name and uh, Kulufelo speaking on their behalf. Thank you so much for your time, Kulufelo. Good evening to you. Good evening, sir, and good evening to your listeners. Mm -hmm. Yes, go for it, Kulufelo. Have you got a question or comment, maybe? No, uh, we, as, as not in my name, we are a movement that works with uh, young boys and males in the communities. And um, as part of the problem, we understand that um, at the core of this issue of intimate femicide is not the way that women would behave, but it's the behavior of men and the core beliefs that we instill either through culture, through socialization and all that. So we, 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 we are hard at work conscientizing our people to see this whole thing in a different light, that uh, there are certain behaviors that are totally unacceptable for a man uh, to, to be found uh, doing them. All right. Kulufelo, it's very interesting. Um, in fact, I'm very happy that, that, that we managed to get you on the line because I think some of the questions that we really asked here, those are some of the questions that maybe you can jump in there. There's one particular one that was asked just now, uh, recently by Lunga. Lunga wants to find out that um, he says we shouldn't call them perpetrators as such. Um, well, let's not let's not debate what we call them but let's say the offender then for lack of a better word the young offender how does your organization help those type of people do you get involved um, you know when their release comes do you get involved with them and sort of um, instill some rehabilitation in their lives or some something uh, our organization works on two levels the first level is that we work with the potential offender uh, just to use Lunga's word there, the potential offender. Now, that means that each and every man that exists in our communities and our societies is most likely is in danger of behaving in that way. So we work with potential uh, of offenders, and we also work with those that are already offenders. And what we do is that we offer them coaching 
uh, training and all that where they go through our program. And from then onwards, when they exit from there, they themselves become coaches for other people that I used to be on this level. I used to, be, I used to think this way. I used to behave that way. And after I've been through this and after I've gotten help through this this movement, this is how I think right now. And this is what I want you guys to learn as a new way of behaving in your, in your society. Mm. Colo fellow, there's something that you, that you're mentioning that's really striking me at the moment. And uh, uh, when you first came on, you, sp- you you mentioned something. You said it's not necessarily the behavior of a woman, but it's actually that of a man. Do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah. Uh, you, we, what what we need to understand is that um, uh, for a long time, our language has always been victim-based language, right? Mm-hmm. Always focusing about the basic governance and got certain days of activism, which is a program that is all, that is a victim-based program. Let's get the victim to speak out and all that, which is a very good thing. But alongside that, we have the offenders and the, and the potential offenders silent and quiet. So while mm-hmm. we teach women how to behave, rather men are getting away with the crime. You know, uh, while we teach women how not to be abused. Men are learning new ways of how to abuse them and so on. Mm. And we feel like as a movement that the language has been phrased, it has been good, but the, 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 there's a big chunk of the problem, which is the core of the problem, and that is, that is manhood, yes. that we have neglected for a very long time. And mm. if you look at it, that um, if we change the way we speak, if I said to you that uh, three in every, uh, I mean, one in every three girls get raped in the country every hour, right? Yes. If I said to you that you'll understand what it means, because that's how we speak. But what if I said to you that two in every three guys rape in the country? How will that sound to you? How will that, how will that make you view yourself as a guy that out of, every, out of every three guys, two of them have a clear intention of abusing, of violating, of raping a woman in the country every mm. one hour? Yeah, very interesting. Um, I'm going to ask you to stay on the line, Kolofelo. I would like to speak to you about it. And um, this is praise. You're going to come in there in a short bit. But let me just take a call quickly. I see Zordwa wants to come in to ask a question on the line. Zordwa, are you calling from Nelspret in a sport? Yeah, uh, No, not Ngoku. Ngoku is Eastern Cape. That's what I'm... Let's hear that. Zordwa, good evening to you. Good evening, Tarabo. How are you? Ah, ngya pila mage singa singa butagi ni. There we go. I got it right this time around. Right. Uh, Singa Tarabo. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very nice to see you, Mr. Swat. Masisha, uh, yeah. Yeah, Tarabo. Si kuluma ngabo ba abe la ba shugubeta ba fan or ba fan na la ba shugubeta mandumba tan. Then me ne ne ya mi lebuge ne na mi ni mu mag. Mandumba tan e wam. Usugubeta i boyfriend yake na lugu psu ni lugu psu ukarab ni alonge ngo bangkulu mangu yaga nyama zani ukutimia sota out linginga le domba chane wa ni una lugu tui achole na gachola akoshe le boyfriend yake lele se ifi yansi yake yambon so ge uti angachola i boyfriend imu kiti mali abe so shugubeta lo mfana doya mfana wa figa na mocha gini ekseni pifongi msebe ndi mwati mage minisengi kiniwe lendo lele ndega kogutu gubula webandu ababula wango baba funa nile simo le babuso ya ngeva karabu nyaguva magi nyaguva but now eh alright ok i hear what you're saying so 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 now what is your concern ab- about this are you are you saying we should also look at what has been done to men that maybe pushes them to behave this way thank you very much it's what i want to say indo le pushe lo mfana loya ukuthi le indo le pushe author pistorius ukuthi aze abula le ndombatana ngiyito tona le indo le because uma ngimbuta lo wami mntwana uvele nje apha elihlata ya ngeka mtshele ukuthi ngendeke yisilalela udla imali yalo mfana lo mfana uyakondla uyafundza sikolo uyakubona and bosebenda so ukusayite ukuthi abiyele evasithi lo wami mntwana siyamendela nathi but nalo mfana kuningi lekamendela bona and lo mfana uyamthamba mara lo wami mntwana uphethwe 
bubuhetu hetu bathe so then sifuna kubuta ukuthi angeke nabenda isummit yema young women lokuthi nje babachushise ukuthi lento le bayentako nabo bayawaphusha la madoda ukuthi atholakale enda tindo le TV hayi ukuthi enda nawo ngoba ayafuna because the anger sometimes can make you do something that you will regret the following day Mm-hmm. Okay, so mm-hmm. Zotwa, Nyabonga, uh, Sisame, that you've taken some time to call in and share. I know this is quite close to your heart, like you're saying now. But uh, look, Stay take closer. courage. Mm-hmm. And uh, it really big ups to people like you who can call in into the radio and say, look, I mean, there's another side of this mm-hmm. we have to look at. But thank you so much for having taken the courage to call us in. I appreciate it. Thank you so very much. All right. It's a minute after 7 o'clock. It's just turned two minutes, actually, after 7 o'clock. We've got about seven minutes to go. Uh, maybe before I come to you, Sis Praise, mm-hmm. just very quickly, um, Kulufelo, what is your take on that? Because now here's another dimension to the problem. Somebody's saying, look, um, as much as we can say women are being abused and women are being murdered, but there's another element to it that some men could come around and say, look, we are being, we are being pushed. What is your take on that? Uh, you know, I, I, I understand that and I, I fully know that that exists. And, and what our movement actually work with, or what we do is that we, we counsel and coach men that go through experiences experience like that. Some of the people that we work with, our clients that we work with, are people that have, been, that have grown up in abusive families, seeing their mothers being abused over and over again, and they normalize that behavior. Some have been through abuse themselves, I close relatives that are women in Australia, and they grow up with this anger against women. I mean, you look at the story of Sally Lane Karabu, they've had a lot of episodes and fights way before the girls are, before she got uh, killed and banned, you know? Uh, so as a movement, what we, one of our, our cries, what, what, one of the things that we call out for is that if you are a man, if you are going to do something like this, before you blow up, before you do anything that you're not supposed to do, come to us, come speak to us, let us help you, let us guide you, let us let us coach you, let us counsel you, let us, let us take you through support systems and all that so that you can be able to know how you get yourself out of that. The problem is that every situation is unique, you know. In Hamas Kral, each and every day we meet men that are going through horrific experiences that are, that are, that are just very horrible. And each, each, each and every one of them has a very unique uh, setup that, that they go through. And we try by all means to work with each and every of them, take time to understand where are you in this whole thing, what is, what is in it for you, how do you go about it, is there a way that you could get out before it's too late, because tomorrow we might have another woman killed, and you might have to tell us that the reason why you did it was because you were encouraged by the behavior or whatever treatment that you got way before you, you, you decided to do what you're doing as a man. All right. Sis Praise, some of the men might be saying, look, um, one of the reasons, one of many reasons that uh, maybe we're taking the law into our hands, let's put Mm. it that way. And and I don't want people to misunderstand what we're trying to do here. We're trying to tackle the problem from both directions. But at the same time, I want everybody listening to know that we are not even encouraging, not even a single bit, any form of reaction. Look, people can say, "Um, you know, Mm. that's understandable, but not condoned. Right. Exactly, right. because mm-hmm. nothing can make you to commit a crime. Mm-hmm. Um, love with violence is not love. And uh, there is no law that encourages you to take, to take it into your own hand. Mm-hmm. We understand that um, it is the issue. Sometimes it is the fact that men do not talk amongst themselves. As I said, that that now we have partnered with uh, men's organizations like the the Kuluman daughter that is looking then into creating that space of the men dialoguing about those issues and equipping them as to what do you do then when you are experiencing a situation of abuse. So the men's dialogue are taking two streams. One, it is the men who are actually abusing so that we ensure that there is a self change that is manifested that is encouraged yeah. and then you also have men who are coming on board who are saying that we are the victims and those are also equipped as to how you can actually handle that situation without 
causing without responding with violence in that situation because we needed to do that and some of the men who have actually come forward and are abused by their partners is it because of the men's sexuality dysfunctionality where you find that then they are not operating in that area but then you know they then a man will stay for ages you know, not knowing as to where they should be going. So the dialogues are actually saying that actually there's help to that. You can mm -hmm. also get help. You can go to a men's clinic and mm -hmm. get some kind of help. And it is your depression that is leading you to doing to that be, yeah. because you are thinking that you are the sole provider in this household. And it is it is not about you being the, the visionary doesn't mean that visionary in a home in a home environment does it mean that you are coming up with all the answers to every problem that is in the household mm -hmm. including the finances it's about joining leadership is about leading and 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 and, and coming up with an inclusive kind of um, resolutions in the house so it is that then that um, the the men's dialogues are actually dealing with and I also want to say that on the 20th we had our first which was launch uh, the men's dialogue and now we are moving Moving on, these are going to be the dialogues that will be held in every province. And uh, we also met with the hashtag not in my name right. and uh, bringing them on board as well. We have had requests coming from a men's organization as well that is called the Inner Men. As I have mentioned that even the dads in the picture that are there, oh, yeah. dads who are yeah. saying that we need to rise up and as men and begin to take the role of yeah. parenting. Mm -hmm. because all these things are coming because of the fact that we are not there we you may have a father who is present in the household but absent in parenting is a father who comes home takes a newspaper he sits before the TV does he know what is happening with their children mm. so now we are saying that men get involved in in raising up your children right we've got about two minutes to go let's see if we can do this very quickly we need to go back to Quena's question Quena's question is actually i don't know Quena's question because uh, when Quena came in she said that it looks like this lady likes the fact that her on a medical aid and every time the men yes that's a hectic one every time the men would would would, would do this horrific thing to her by cutting her ears um what well that's what she's i tell you what let's handle that off air because i, th I think this one is i can see you're just about to rise up on your chair <laughs> <laughs> let's handle this one off air can we do that we'll call Quena we'll call Quena back because okay. this will take a bit of a long time to address really let's go to who are we going to Simama from Lady Smith right Simama you are last caller Simama and my producer has got a tendency of waiting for me to say you are the last caller and he puts in five more this is the last one Simama welcome good evening sir good evening good evening good evening Hey, but uh, good evening and thank you very much, Gwen and Omama, to raise up such an important issue. But Karabo, I will go cool and at me and give me a bong and you would need raise the double fan alone. I want to be Fazan and Enga and about Pili Levi, Rungula Bible, see I tell us young Musa putting us a song is card good and nothing about no more gang Ulungu, Lugula Banting, about Lavanta Benzagan, and I will call him more a corner. Give for the language and I send them beat. She was doing great Manda, not to go to see over but to protect them. Yeah. And to love them. Uh -huh. To protect them. Thanks, Mama. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Simama. Thank you for your call. I really appreciate it. We are a people beat, but Yeah, no, thank you so much for that. It's a spiritual. Factor and I also want to say that 
all of these dialogues, what we are commissioned to do as the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development is to develop a national prevention strategy mm -hmm. against femicide. And we are roping in the religious sector, mm -hmm. the cultural sector, the traditional leaders are also involved to say that there's no culture that is encouraging men to oh, yeah, kill. Absolutely. We are involving youth as well to come because from, from the recent deaths that we have had, we have found that it is young men who are actually killing young women. So what it means is that we need to reach out to the youth. And I also want to say that as a father at home, please teach your children love because if you don't teach them love they go out and look for the blessers and the blessers are there to welcome them and yeah. and rape them and because them, yeah. i mean it's rape mm -hmm. to sleep with a young girl who is below the age of i mean the legal age Jeez, of 12 goodness, it's rape yeah. it's rape whether there is consent or not yeah. so we need then to to sort of um teach love at home exactly there we go all right um Kulufelo, maybe your last uh, comments very briefly there before i let you go uh, Karabo, my last comment is tomorrow we are in Hammond Square from 10 o'clock. Uh, we are meeting at Jubilee Mall for one of the biggest dialogues in the country. If you are around, please come through and join us. We're going to be having a march from 10 o'clock in Hammond Square at Jubilee Mall tomorrow, 10 o'clock in the morning. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, Gwena, before you go, maybe is there any contact point where people can reach you, maybe to get in more information about this event for tomorrow? Gwena, I, I, I beg your pardon. Kolofelo? All right. Uh, my yeah. yeah our, my email address is, is, is my email address is kulofelo at not in my name sa dot c o dot z a, and my my business line is zero seven six two three six five seven six four. All right. So kulofelo um, at not in my name dot c o dot z a right. At not in my name S A dot not in my name S A dot Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much. Kulufelo then Masha, spokesperson from uh, Not in My Name, is actually speaking. He's part of the program. Yeah, yeah, Brapet, Patrick Shai. Unfortunately, Patrick could not um, could not be part of the, the program this evening. But Kulufelo came in there to speak on his behalf. And we thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening, Kulufelo. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Sir. Oh, there we go. And any last comments from yourself, what from I can say is that we need men like Patrick Shai, who are coming out to say that I was once an abuser, mm -hmm. but right now I'm living a life of loving my wife and my children, and of also being there as a father to my children, and and leaving that that legacy of love uh, to my children. And also we need people like. Kulufelo as well, mm -hmm. who are the youth and coming forward to say that let's stop it guys, let's stop now and begin to think about self change about the issues of, of encouraging um, a healthy family fiber in our environments, we need them and as a department we are out there and we are also saying that let more and more men's organization come with uh, to our department to partner with us because now we, we understand that we have been talking a lot to women Men. But let's talk now to the boys. Let's talk now to the youth and also to the male youth, particularly, and also to the fathers and say that this problem is ours. There is no legislation that can fix it mm. um, alone. So we need you as well to come. So the, the national prevention strategy that we are developing, it starts at home. Everyone in in this country will have a role to play in terms of preventing and stopping femicide and and we need all of them now to come and to our department and partner with us as we're going to be going around and talking but it's not talking only but it is also a finding ways of preventing a femicide in our country mm -hmm. and with this prevention we're going to ensure that it gets to parliament uh, the prevention strategy so that everyone every department every mm -hmm. ngo every father and every boy and every teacher is able then to implement it the voice of the ever so passionate uh, give me praise advocate uh, praise kambula I'm heading up the promotion of the rights of the vulnerable groups unit at the DOJCD. thank you so much for your time thank you. you did promise you coming back and you yes, are I yeah did. my goodness yes, and I, I saw you coming running down the corridor <laughs> I'm like oh, yeah. Like, yeah, you're yeah. here. Thank, Thank you so much you. for your time. Appreciate Thanks, it. Yeah. So there we go. And uh, we could not get a hold of uh, Dr. Patrick Shai, but to speak on his behalf... Um
Speaking on his behalf, then mm. it was Kulufelo Masha, spokesperson from uh, Not In My Name. So mm. thank you so much uh, to all the people that have called in. And we are very, we humbly apologize to those who that could not come in, really. It was quite a, 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 a informative show, I must say. Thanks to the producers for this evening. And the, in, the interns are still here, by the way. And they're still going to push a little bit more. They're good, yeah. learning quite a lot. In fact, mm. they're the ones who are running the desk. Wow, that's they supervise. They're supervising the the, 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 the the head sound engineer. Wow, I can, I can see that interesting energy coming he, out. He is doing very really? little today. They're telling him which part. Uh, I can see the intern saying and, to me. And they're good. also educated right now. Yeah, they are very About educated. femicide. Oh, good, go. good. Thank you so much, guys. You're doing mm. an absolutely amazing job. How to treat job. their girlfriends and, well. And, I've, and, I, and maybe one of the cameras, we have cameras in the studio, by the way, just in case you didn't know. You can get this program on YouTube. Just go and check it out on the GCIS page. There is a link there that will take you to the YouTube platform where you can see this this program and many more programs that we've done before. But maybe one of the cameras should turn and pan to the supervisor, the radio unit's supervisor. Hey, what are you doing today? Wow. What are you doing today? Yes. What are you doing today? A bronze. Wow. You know what he did on top of that? Mm. He's got a bronze phone on top of that. Wow. He is hectic. <laughs> Ah, My goodness, thank you so imagine. much. That's Babu Lennox Claus. <laughs> uh, all right, something big is happening in Middleburg, and uh, this is my plea to you if you're in the Middleburg area or if you can get there. Please can I ask you to go support uh, a Minister of um, uh, Mineral Resources. That's Minister Museben Zizwani. He's going to be doing the Mpumalanga Mining Charter in Bizo. And this is going to be happening in Mpumalanga in Middleburg. So go and support him. Deputy Minister Jeffrey is leading a youth dialogue as well on constitutional education tomorrow. And that's going to be in Pulukwani. So if you can join those two ministers, yes. I'd mm. really, really appreciate it. From myself, but this evening I've learned quite a number of words. I've learned... Exactly. It sounds French. We have phones. We have seven. Okay. We have a lot of money. We have a lot of money. We have a lot of money. Do they know that our act is gender neutral? So any boy and any man who is abused can actually apply for a protection order. Every right that is due to a woman in South Africa is also due to a man in terms of our legislation. So I, I just want to say that. I tell you, now that you've said that, let me give him the number to call if you want to exactly. find out more about that. Mm. Here's the number. You can call the Stop Gender Violence Helpline. It's 0800-150-150. The Lifeline National Counseling Line, it's 0861-322-322. So those numbers can be useful to you. Let's wrap it up from myself. Tomorrow, so this is always status closer tomorrow. Mm. Let's see. Let's meet again. Like me, yes. We <laughs> like closer, you. There yes. we go. So let's meet again next week. Same place, same time. Ciao for now. Thank you.